YouTube, what is going on? It's your boy Benji, and we're back balling. Hey, look, if you're new, please don't forget to subscribe. You can follow me on social media platforms as well as Hoops HQ. Man, the WNBA has had the internet ablaze all season, and of course, another clip has emerged from the wheel works and has got people talking. We're gonna check it out and give our opinion on it. Let's see it. So obviously this is when um, the Aces were watching the NCAA tournament Final Four. UConn was playing, uh, of course. Paige Beckers was playing, who is potentially going to be uh, a lot of people believe to be a number one draft pick next year. Women, Paige reminds me a lot of you. Like you say, you're not really about me. And she knows how her privilege has gotten her to that point. And also, like she's good at basketball. But, like she understands her privilege and yeah. like, pushes her over the top in a sense. It reminds me a lot of you. And I think, and I mean, that's a compliment. So that little moment that I guess was catching on camera where they were mic'd up or whatever talking about privilege. I particularly believe that they were talking about white privilege um, in regard I had the internet ablaze. Let's check, let's check it out what people got to say. All right. So, in the words of a great unanimous MVP, she knows her privilege has gotten her to that point and also like she's good at basketball, obviously. And they put up Sabrina's stats against the Aces and Brianna Stewart's stats against the Aces as the uh, WNBA Finals are currently underway. I'm sorry, not the Finals. So people are upset. Imagine being a 6'4", God-gifted specimen telling a 5'8", woman that her white privilege got into the league, not the sheer hard work and determination. Not my goat. And we'll check out the comments say about that. No one is saying privilege out of anyone in the league. Coming to this season before Anja last minute, Nike deal, the three women with signature deals are all white. What did you say? The, th the three best WNBA players are white? That's when it comes into play. Interesting enough. I'm not a merchandise expert. I know Clark, Ionescu, and Kate Martin were ahead of Asian uh, jersey sales this year. Nike, Adidas, etc. are all about making money. They have the market research. How many white NBA players have shoe deals? What? You just point out three white players get more attention than the majority of white country. does not click for you that the specific thing really works. Clark and Sabrina are two of the best college basketball players of all time. Clark is so popular. Her team is a better famous site. Her barely playing. But yeah, if you want to get more divisive, just speak about race and color when it regards to the WNBA. But you say your number, if you would have been the number two pick or three pick yeah. as opposed to one, how do you think that would have affected you, you know, staying in the league through struggles or not at all? I mean, I would have been still in the league because I'm a, I'm a dog. Like, I would have found a way. <laughs> I would have found a way. Uh, no question. I definitely think the expectations of being a number one pick are brutal, especially if you have any type of height or like media coming out of college. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're just brutal. And then I don't think it helps being a 5'8 white girl coming into the league with 85% black women that want to take your head off. Like, just straight up, right? Like, yeah. that's just what it is. And I didn't know. I, you know, me, happy go lucky walking into the locker room like, hey. Like, I didn't know. Uh, I learned the yeah. hard way. But but that's real. That's what it is. And uh, I think that I think that it would have been better in some ways because I would have been a little bit more under the radar. But in other ways, I definitely think that, um, you know, having that type of struggle and adversity has prepared me for the moment I'm in now. And if y'all are unaware, Caitlin Clark recently received a lot of notoriety for her play because Caitlin Clark is now the NCAA's all-time leading scorer for men and women. Who is number two on the women's end? Right here. Gussie Boom. Dog at Washington. I'll tell you that. I was watching her highlights. She was going crazy while she was in school. I was I was tuning into the Washington games. I ain't lying. And you can see it here. Women straight killer in college are being depressed the first few years in the league. Y'all think we are playing? This is what really happens. Can you imagine how people would view it 
if in a white dominated field the white people were saying the black people mostly got here because they had a leg up on others due to their skin color this is a story that was actually written by ESPN um, where Kelsey Plum was actually asked a couple questions about the similar topic so more context for why Asia can't talk to her teammate about this and the article says, who gets to be a WNBA superstar? The player who scores the most points, the one who gets the most championship rings, the one who sells the most jerseys, or are there factors beyond the court? So this is winning. Someone that can have the really broad shoulders to help carry the load of a team. A WNBA superstar is about play on the court, working in the community, social justice, elevating from marketing and brand perspective. Because, remember, a lot of y'all were talking about who is the face of the league? It's all about visibility, the marketability, and the machine behind you, says Mayor Rose Davis, Penn State Assistant Professor of African American Studies and co-host of Burn It All Down. Who gets the machine is the heart of a lot of the issues. The verbal machine being the power of the media marketplace team and league. Lining up behind a player to push them out of consumers. There is no public database that tracks endorsement deals of WNBA players. Multiple people with knowledge of the marketplace for a league that has more than 80% of people of color Consistently cited six names. Candace Parker, Sue Bird, Sabrina, Asia, Brianna Stewart, and Ella Del Don. Just two of them are black. So now we're down to the important part. I think it is hard for a league to push us in a sense because a black woman just doesn't check off the boxes of what is marketable. Well, has been the other side of that, cringing when her face appeared in graphics promoting her team earlier in the career when she was playing limited minutes and scoring sparingly. But this league is about respect and you have to earn your ways. It's the number one pick of 2017 track out of the University of Washington. And I didn't. I was getting preferential treatment because I was straight and white. I blocked the WNBA on social media. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Name a single other sport where the first overall pick isn't promoted in media. You can't force people that you want to be stars. It's a natural process. Of course, media backing can help it, but some people just ain't built for it. The media tried to make Kawhi Leonard a star. He is not. Ace is not claiming to be a victim. I don't understand why you're bringing up how she was raised. Because somebody talked about how she was had a two home, a two family home in the, in the suburbs, went to private school, and was a media's consensus pick for the MVP the entire season. If she is still a victim, she ain't a queen. Can't be both. The point is that she and other black women have to do more than their white counterparts to be promoted in marketing, even when they have better accolades and resumes. Here's a pushback. Why does Angel Reese get 10 times the promotion and sponsorships than a four-time NCAA champion, three-time NCAA Player of the Year, two-time WNBA champion, finals MVP, and regular season MVP? Brianna Stewart. And here's a callback to what Paige was actually saying that got people thinking. Um... With the light that I have now, um, as a white woman who leads a black-led sport um, and celebrated here, I want to show a light on black women. Um, they don't get the media coverage that they deserve. Um, they've given so much to this sport and the community and society as a whole, and their value is un undeniable. Um, and in the WNBA, last season, the postseason awards, 80% of the winners were black, but they got half the amount of coverage as a white athletes. So I think it's time for change. Um, sports media holds the key to storylines. Sport Sports media and sponsors tell us who is valuable, and you have told the world that I matter today, and everyone who voted, thank you. Um, but I think we should use this power together to also celebrate black women. So to Maria Taylor, Robin Roberts, Maya Moore, Odyssey Alexander, to all the incredible black women in my life, on my teams, to Breonna Taylor and all the lives lost, and to those names who have not yet learned, but I hope to share, I stand behind you and I'll continue to follow, follow you and follow your lead and fight for you guys. So I just want to say thank you for everything. And this is what our MVP had to say, apparently, in the comments on Instagram. Y'all jumping on me for saying Paige and Kelsey are great allies for black women. It's crazy, but it's okay. I appreciate and respect them both. And, of course, a couple of other interesting takes. But it means the white girl is definitely afraid of being labeled racist in the black sport. So she spent the entire time of her respective streets bending her knee to blame women after winning the award for being better than them in basketball. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Um, are we wrongfully attacking Asia for this? Or are 
folks wrongfully attacking Kelsey Plum, saying that she should have retaliated and not necessarily allowed this to be swept under the rug and just been, I guess, a pushover in this scenario. Uh, so I think a lot of people on, on the internet got it wrong. Like, I don't think it's saying, oh, be, she is where she is because she is white. No, I don't think that's at all what Asia was trying to say. I think she was just acknowledging that there's a different level of coverage that she may receive simply because she fits the narrative that people are looking to uh, chase or she fits the mold that a lot of people believe that she should be in. I think that's kind of more what Asia was addressing. Now, I think there's valid points to be made. Like, are we going to argue that because Asia is not getting the coverage that we believe that she should be receiving as who uh, someone who are, we are calling the best player in the league, when you got somebody who essentially number one and number two, uh, whenever you want to give it to a Brianna Stewart, who is wildly decorated, isn't receiving the same amount of attention on the day to day that Angel Reese is getting, negative or positive. You know what I mean? So I guess that the, the debate can be had. Is at the end of the day, we're talking about the coverage Caitlin Clark's receiving in regards to um, Angel, but like the point is there. I think that we could be talking about the same thing. Why is Brianna Stewart? Getting the uh, not getting the attention that Angel Reese is getting. At the end of the day, I get it. It's just about driving narratives. What's going to be popular nowadays is typically what's going to be the topic of discussion, whether that's on the social media realm, whether that's whatever the media is discussing. That's typically what's going to get highlighted, you know. Um, just like we saw, Kelsey Plum was number one pick, best player in college, best player ever. At the time, right? In regards to what she was able to do statistically for uh, the Washington Huskies. Kayla Clark superseded that. So, of course, she was going to get a lot of eyes on her simply because of what we were able to see her do um, prowess-wise. Same reason we looked at J.J. Reddick. Same reason a lot of people looked at Adam Morrison. These guys had such amazing success at the collegiate level. We all were ready to see how would this translate over to the pros in the men's game? So in the women's game, plenty of us would see the same thing. We all see the way Juju plays, and we all assume that she's going to have such great success at the next level. We watch Paige, and we say, oh, yeah, this is, a, this is an undisputed number one draft pick. I think that there's definitely uh, a way that you can be regarded and kind of pushed Simply because you fit the narrative, you're, you're like let's say you're a little more clean cut. You you have a better a better image. You're somebody who's maybe morals that we can get behind as a company of business and uh, allow you to become the brand, the face of the brand, etc. Yes, I think that's a, that's the thing. But is it really a white privilege when the majority of the league is black? Yes, that does exist because. At the end of the day, these women are black women, and these women are white women, and these women are purple, orange, whatever. But at the end of the day, in the real world, you still have to go back, and you still kind of fit in where you fit in, if that makes sense. So I think there's a lot to be addressed there. And I mean, y'all let me know in the comments below. At the end of the day, the WNBA women's basketball is, is being highlighted, and the spectacular talent that's all over the court is getting an opportunity to shine. But... Is it something that we're going to give them the amount of um, flowers and kudos that they should be receiving as individual players? Or is it going to be something that's going to become tea and shade every every night? And we're going to avoid the fact that someone like the Peach Color is going for 40 night in, night out. Yeah, let me know.